Good evening and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be going over the Web3 versus Bitcoin discussion that's going to be happening probably for the next few months. I can already see this playing out in my personal opinion, so I'm going to give you my thoughts on it and why I don't like how this conversation is, is being set up. And I think that it's solely a diversion, distraction, so on and so forth. Let me make my case for why I'm going to say this, because this is there's a lot of nuance here. And in my opinion, this is happening in the wrong context, and it's just it's not going to lead to any type of productive conversation. So that's why I'm doing this video, and that's what the video is about. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Okay, so let's go over two Jack Dorsey tweets here, and then I'm going to get into everything. You don't own Web3. The VCs and their LPs do. It will never escape their incentives. It's ultimately a centralized entity with a different label. Know what you're getting into. And then the VCs are the problem, not the people. Now, his first tweet, I agree with everything that he said. So let me just first say that. The, the, what he said, the words, I agree with what he said. However, I do not agree with the context in which this conversation is happening. And that's the biggest part here, is that this is happening under false pretenses. And I'm going to show you why. So first, let's just start with the El Salvador example. How many Bitcoin maximalists come out and talk about El Salvador, use it as the shining example? And guys, listen, I have no issues with any, I have no issues with like, I'm happy about El Salvador. I'm happy about uh, you know, adoption, about implementation. I'm happy about all of it, okay? I have, no, I have no issues with anything. I have issues with fake conversations that are happening. That's the thing I have issues with. And that that flowing over and affecting newer retail investors who are just trying to figure it out and make it happen, okay? So look at, look at El Salvador. Think of all the Bitcoin maximalists that come out and rave about El Salvador, how great, you know, how great it is, how it's this monumental, you know, achievement that they have now transitioned into this new currency as far as their legal tender in their country. And yes, it is. It is a historical moment, I will admit. But those same Bitcoin maximalists who, who will rail against all coins and, and Web3 technology and just only Bitcoin, only Bitcoin, but yet... El Salvador, their entire government infrastructure is built on Algorand, and they have made Bitcoin payments much more feasible because of Flexa. So both of which have their own cryptocurrency, their own Web3 technology, right? So the fact that that is even something that happens tells you how dishonest this whole conversation is, in my opinion. The same maximalists that will come out and regularly promote what's happening in El Salvador, rightfully so, rightfully so, I understand why. And again, I'm happy about all this. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled about the adoption, okay? As long as adoption continues, which it will, I'm going to be thrilled. So, but the problem is, is that those people want to come out and go, Bitcoin, 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 El Salvador, El Salvador, look what El Salvador is doing, look what El Salvador is doing. But they don't acknowledge that El Salvador has also adopted Web3 technology, and not on a small scale for their entire government infrastructure and to enable all of their Bitcoin payments so it's more scalable, so people aren't sitting around waiting for 10 to 20 minutes for a transaction to go through. But they don't want to have that discussion. But they want to rail against Web3 technology. They want to rail against centralization. But they're not going to bring that up. They're not going to bring that up. And, and in my, my opinion, that just shows the lack of principles, right? Because I'm fine, you know, I, I'm fine. As long as there's clear lines drawn, I'm, I'm fine with that. But the issue is, is that there's no line straw in this space. It's all, it's all false narratives and deception, in my opinion. So, okay, so this is what he said. Their problem with him saying this and talking about Web3 and, you know, you don't own it, the VCs do, the VCs are the problem, so on and so forth. The problem is, is that you're comparing Web3 or cryptocurrencies to Bitcoin as if they're comparable in any way, shape, form, or fashion. And they're not. One is the internet in its entirety. One is a digital version of gold that has improved on all the different faults that gold had. Two completely different things. They work very well together, however, but in a vacuum, they are two drastically different things, different use cases, value propositions, everything, growth potential, all of those things, Com two completely different things. So let's just say, for the people who are against Web3 and that they're against the centralization, what internet are you going to use? What internet are you going to use? Are you just not going to use the internet? Because there's not going to be a Web2. And that's really why this is such a ridiculous conversation to be having. having. 
First, we need to get to the point where we acknowledge what this actually is, who all is involved and how far along we are. And at that point, we can start having an honest conversation. But nobody's interested in doing that. OK, everybody just wants to push false narratives. Because once you determine that this is the new Internet, the conversation changes, because at that point in time, you have to think, all right, well, OK, so I'm not going to invest in it. But if it's the Internet, am I just not going to use it? But I'm going to use it. I'm going to have to use it because it's going to be the only Internet that there is, um, because Web3 and Web2 are going to merge together. They'll be integrated together. And Web3 is slowly going to consume Web2. And that's how this is all going to play out. So are you going to use Web3? But you're just not going to. So it's good enough for you to use it, but it's not good enough for you to invest in. Which, to some degree, I could understand that. I could understand that. I mean, it, it, if there's nothing else to use but that. I can understand that, but you want to put your money in Bitcoin. You want to support, support. I understand that. OK, um, but where do you draw the line? What level of involvement from institutions is too much? Because I would argue Bitcoin mining companies going public and BlackRock and Vanguard becoming large shareholders. Now they have a seat on the board. Now they are involved in decision making conversations. I would involve that. I would I would suggest that that's just as bad as the VCs helping fund the development on these networks. And if you want to make the case, because they are different things, I'm not trying to compare them as if they're the exact same situation because they're not. But where's the line? OK, so let's say that the Bitcoin mining company is going public. That's not a problem. That's not a problem. And BlackRock and Vanguard buying a bunch of the shares, becoming large shareholders, having, you know, being, having a seat on the board. That's not a problem. OK, that's fine. What about the OTC desk? The fact that the rich elite have created their own market that they can accumulate massive amounts of Bitcoin on? That if doesn't affect the spot price. Meanwhile, the spot price is going down because of how they structured the pricing. Why isn't the pricing based solely or mostly on just the on-chain data? Why do we even have to ask how the price is calculated? Why do the elites have their own market that they can buy that doesn't affect the spot market? Can mean you do that? Is that not a problem? That's another example of a centralized entity, rich elites. Wealthy investors, institutional type investors creating their own thing, and it doesn't affect the spot price. So that market, in essence, does negatively affect a lot of retail investors because it gives them a wrong perception on what's happening in the market. But that's not a problem. OK, that's fine. What about leverage trading? And, and the fact that the leverage trading market is so connected to the spot market and where leverage traders being liquidated somehow has any effect on the spot market. Is that not a problem? to further manipulate the price? Is that not an issue? So where are the lines at? And let's say that you don't invest in Web3 tech. Is that going to stop Web3 tech from becoming the new internet? No, it's not. What internet are you planning on using? Right. And, and so the last point here is the big channels. The big channels have sold so many people a, 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 a lie on the little guy versus the big guy. And listen, five years ago, I could understand somebody making that conversation. After the last two years, knowing all the information that's out there, this is publicly available information, okay? Anybody can find this out on their own. There's enough information out there to where nobody, nobody should be making that, should be having that conversation. Nobody should say it's the little guy versus the big guy anymore. That should be retired and it should be, it should be gone from existence. Nobody should say that anymore. They're either dumb or they are intentionally misleading their viewers at this point in time. Five years ago was a different conversation. Three years ago was a different conversation. But today, nobody should be saying that anymore. But if you look at this through the prism of this is the little guy versus the big guy, yeah, you'll run into all of these different you know, internal you know, conflicts that you have about centralization, decentralization, freedom of speech, no freedom. Of, like you, you'll run into all these things. If you view this as the people in charge got it, this is their new system, they're implementing it right now. And, you know, to their credit, they're giving normal everyday people an opportunity to pay attention, do their own research and become generationally wealthy. Not, you know, not, not, not uh, you know, trying to talk you know, nicely about the wealthy elite, that being said, for all of their faults and for all the things that they have done that have negatively affected normal everyday people, you have to give them credit because they could have structured this differently. They did not have to structure this the way that they did. There are some other reasons on why they did it that probably did not have to have anything to do with helping out the little guy, but that's a topic for a different conversation. Okay, so look at how many things are dependent on the internet. Okay, you can order everything. 
off the internet. You do all your work on the internet, email on the internet. You want to find out anything at all. You want to find out how far your drive is. You want to find out what the weather is going to be. Google it. You want to find out, you know, who won the World Series in 1985? Google it. You can find out anything that you want to know on the internet through these technologies. Okay, you want to start your own business. You want to, you know, you already have a business and you want to take it online. Social media gives you the opportunity to do that, including many other things. Schooling is moving online. 20 years ago, if you wanted to send somebody $100, you had to cut them a check and put it in the mail. Now you can just open the PayPal app and send it to them. You can also buy Bitcoin. You can go do all your online banking. You can go to Grubhub and order food. You can get on YouTube and watch any video that's ever existed, except for the ones that they deleted. Uh, text messaging. Th think about how much the world has changed over the last 20 years because of the internet. And think about how dependent our lives are on the internet. You think about QuickBook. Do you, you do your taxes online now, right? You don't even really need a cell phone provider anymore. You just need an application that can make calls if it has Wi-Fi access. So think about how ingrained the internet and these services are in our day-to-day -day life. Now compare that to Bitcoin. So one, you have the internet. The other one, you have digital gold. And so the th two things should not be compared. They shouldn't be compared at all. And look at the functionality of Bitcoin and then look at the functionality of the internet. I would imagine, considering the overwhelming degree of complexity that exists in creating the internet, which is going to be what Web3 is, okay, there's a lot of factors that go into that. So, uh, you know, expecting the structure of everything to be the exact same as Bitcoin, considering that they're not being used for anywhere remotely the same things, and one is going to be the internet that everything in the world is done on, that everybody's on, and the other one is going to be digital gold. So the two things shouldn't be compared. And you shouldn't have those expectations that this should be structured exactly like Bitcoin because of X, Y, and Z, because there's not intended to do the same thing that Bitcoin is doing. So what would happen if the internet went down? Think about that. What would happen if the internet went down? And then what would happen if Bitcoin went down? And then compare and contrast those two things. What adds more value? Which one can be more easily replaced? Is Bitcoin dependent on Web3 or is Web3 dependent on Bitcoin? In my opinion, no for both. They both enhance each other. But if you look at El Salvador, El Salvador is a great example, okay? They implemented Bitcoin as a as legal tender. But what did they also do? They also adopted Flexa to make payments quite fast and more scalable. And they adopted Algorand for their you know, government infrastructure. So they're a package deal, in my opinion. Our way of life is, it doesn't have to be a package deal. It's just, it's, it's optimized the best as a package deal. Our way of life is dependent on the internet at this point. Which one will create more wealth? What would, what would happen if the VCs weren't involved? Okay, think about the timeline. Think about how much longer this would take if the VCs were involved. Think about the scale that this, would, that this could go on if the VCs were involved. Think about the amount of liquidity. If this was just a retail thing and no institutions were in and no institutions were going to get in, because again, any VC involvement, VCs are the problem. So are they, the, are they only the problem when they're early stage investors? What about if they come later on? Are they still the problem then? So they should just not be in the market at all? They shouldn't be invested? If they're tied to anything, it's bad? I mean, what, there, this is no logic. There's no logic. There's no reason. There's no nothing. And that's why I'm saying, and Jack's a smart guy. He's not a stupid person. He knows what he's doing. And in my opinion, he's having this entire conversation under false pretenses. For what reason? Only he knows. I can't speak to his you know, incentives for why he says certain things. Um, the last part here is the most important, in my opinion, one of the most important. How do we know the same people didn't set all of this up? Bitcoin included. If you look at El Salvador, in my opinion, El Salvador is a good example, a good use case for why I think it is more likely than not that very intelligent people sat in a room many, many years ago and said, okay, at some point in time, this debt bubble is going to pop. At some point in time, we can no longer continue with this system. Our tech is already outdated. Our banking system is outdated. Country to country, it's a mess moving money or making any type of transaction. There's just so many areas that we are not fully capitalizing on what we could be if we had a better system that fully captured all of the value and was scalable 
and allowed us to move things very, very quickly and fully utilized everything, all the users, all the people that were developing on it, all the corporations that are adopting it, it, it maximized the value of everything. That's what we need. So that's what we're going to do. How do we know that conversation didn't take place? How do we know the same people that are creating the Web3 tech didn't create Bitcoin? How do we know that? We don't. So again, this goes back to making decisions based on high degree of certainty, low degree of certainty. And I'm making decisions based on high degree of certainty. Things that I have low degree of certainty on, I'm not making decisions based on that. Because I don't think that it's a smart decision. Because I don't have a lot of certainty, right? So that, that, that's, that's the point that I want to make. What, what, what internet are you going to use? The Bitcoin maximalists, they're going to be using Web3. That, that's really the, the best part here. The Bitcoin maximalists, they'll be using Web3. They're already going to be using Web3. So they can hate it all they want. They can come out and, and say, and they cannot invest all they want but they're going to be using it because it is going to be essential because they're getting rid of the old internet, okay? It's essential. It's essential. It's no longer optional. It's no longer a theory or an idea that they have for the future. It is the existing system that runs everything in our entire world. Everything is dependent on it. And so that's how the conversation should be happening is through that context. And it's not. It's not because nobody wants to be honest about anything. This is 2021 going into 2022. And in 2022, it will be the same as in 2021. Uh, nobody will tell the truth about anything. It will all be lies and propaganda, false framing, false narratives. And yeah. And the smart people, like if you're watching this video, you're a smart person. Uh, you will figure it out and you'll position yourself well. And all the other people that get caught up in these nonsense conversations uh, and the other people that still think crypto is a scam for some reason, I mean, they're going to get smoked, right? They're going to get smoked. So, and that's not to say the people that just invest in Bitcoin are going to, you know, they're, they're probably going to do very well. I mean, I'm very bullish on Bitcoin, okay? I, I'm making the case for Web3 because there's a more sensible case to be made for Web3 in this conversation. However, I will do a second part of this video where I make the case for solely Bitcoin because I can do that. I'm very bullish on Bitcoin, okay? Um, so that's my video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I know this was kind of a rant and all over the place. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Let me know your thoughts. Take care. Have a good night. I'll see you in the next video.